Mark Robert Michael Wahlberg, formerly known by his stage name Marky Mark, is an American actor and former rapper. His work as a leading man spans the comedy, drama, and action genres. Wikipedia. Born, June, the 5th, 1971, age 53 years, Dorchester, Boston, Massachusetts, United States. Spouse, Rhea Durham, M. 2009. Upcoming movies, The Union, Flight Risk, Music Groups, New Kids on the Block, 1984, 1985, Marky Mark, and the Funky Bunch, 1990, 1993, Height, 1.73 M, Siblings, Donnie Wahlberg, Paul Wahlberg, Scott Wahlberg, More. American actor Mark Wahlberg is one of a handful of respected entertainers, who successfully made the transition from teen pop idol to acclaimed actor, a Best Supporting Actor Oscar nominee for The Departed, 2006, who went on to receive positive critical reviews for his performance in The Fighter, 2010. Wahlberg also is a solid comedy actor, proven by his starring role in Ted, 2012. Mark Robert Michael Wahlberg was born June 5, 1971 in a poor working-class district. Dorchester, of Boston, Massachusetts. He is the son of Alma Elaine, Donnelly, a nurse's aide and clerk, and Donald Edward Wahlberg, a delivery driver. Wahlberg is the youngest of nine children. He is of Swedish, from his paternal grandfather, French-Canadian, English, Irish and Scottish, descent. The large Wahlberg brood didn't have a lot growing up, especially after his parents divorced when he was eleven. The kids crammed into a three-bedroom apartment, none of them having very much privacy. Mark's mother has said that after the divorce, she became very self-absorbed with her own life. She has blamed herself for her son's subsequent problems and delinquency. Wahlberg dropped out of high school at age 14, but later got his jed to pursue a life of petty crime and drugs. He'd spend his days scamming and stealing, working on the odd drug deal before treating himself to the substances. The young man also had a violent streak, one which was often aimed at minorities. At age 16, he was convicted of assault against a Vietnamese men after he had tried to rob them. As a result of his assault conviction, he was sentenced to serve 50 days in prison at Deer Island Penitentiary. Whilst there, he began working out to pass time, and, when he emerged at the end of his sentence, he had gone from being a scrawny young kid to a buff young man. Wahlberg also credits jail time as being his motivation to improve his lifestyle and leave crime behind him. Around this time, his older brother Donnie Wahlberg had become an overnight teen idol as a member of the 1980s boy band New Kids on the Block. A precursor to the boy band craze, the group was dominating the charts and were on top of their game. Mark himself had been an original member of the band, but had backed out early on, uncomfortable with the squeaky clean image of the group. Donnie used his connections in the music business to help his little brother secure a recording contract. And soon the world was introduced to Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, with Wahlberg as a bad boy rapper. Who danced in his boxers. Despite a lack of singing ability, promoters took to his dance moves and a physique they knew teenage girls would love. Donnie scripted some easy songs for Mark, who collected a troupe of dancers and a DJ to become his Funky Bunch, and Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch was born. His debut album, Music for the People, was a smash hit, which was propelled along by the rapper's willingness to derobe down to boxer briefs on stage not to mention several catchy tunes. Teenage girls thrilled to the ripping, bad boy. Record producer David Giffen saw in Wahlberg a cash cow of marketing ability. After speaking to designer Calvin Klein, Marky Mark was set up as the designer's chief underwear model. His scantily clad figure soon adorned billboards across the nation. Ironically, while the new kids on the block's fame was dwindling as audiences tired of their syrupy lyrics, Marky Mark's bad boy image was becoming even more of a commodity. He was constantly in the headlines, often of the tabloids, after multiple scandals. In 1992, he released a book dedicated to his penis. Wahlberg was constantly getting into rumored fights, most memorably with Madonna and her entourage at a Los Angeles party. While things were always intense, they were relatively harmless and made for enjoyable reading for the public. However, when the story of his arrest for assault and the allegations of racism broke in the press, things took on a decidedly darker note. People were not amused. Soon after, while on a British talk show along with rapper Shabba Ranks, he got into even more trouble. After Ranks made the statement that gays should be crucified, Wahlberg was accused of condoning the comments by his silence. Marky Mark was suddenly surrounded by charges of brutality, 
homophobia and racial hatred. His second album, You Gotta Believe, had not been faring well and, after the charges surfaced, it plummeted from the charts. Adding to the hoopla, Wahlberg was brought to court for allegedly assaulting a security guard. He was ordered to make amends by appearing in a series of anti-bias advertisements. Humbled and humiliated by his fall from grace in the music world, Wahlberg decided to pursue another angle, acting. He dropped the Marky Mark moniker and became known simply as Mark Wahlberg. His first big screen role came in Penny Marshall's Renaissance Man, 1994. Despite the name change, many people snickered at the idea of the has-been rapper thinking he could make it as an actor. From the get-go, he was proving them wrong. In Renaissance Man, 1994, he gave an utterly charming performance, as a simple but sincere army recruit. What naysayers remain found it increasingly difficult to write Mark Wahlberg off as he delivered one fine performance after another. He blew them away in the controversial The Basketball Diaries, 1995, and chilled them in fear, 1996, as every father's worst nightmare. The major turning point in Wahlberg's career, came with the role of troubled porn star Dirk Diggler in Paul Thomas Anderson's Boogie Nights, 1997. Since then, Wahlberg has chosen roles that demonstrate a wide range of dramatic ability, starring in critically acclaimed dramas such as Three Kings, 1999, and The Perfect Storm, 2000. Popcorn flicks like Planet of the Apes, 2001, and Contraband, 2012, and even indies such as I Heart Huckabees, 2004. Wahlberg was the executive producer of such television series as Boardwalk Empire, 2010, In Treatment, 2008, and the highly successful comedy Entourage, 2004, which was partly based on his experiences in Hollywood. Wahlberg and his wife Rhea Durham have four children, family, spouse, Rhea Durham, August, the first 2009, present, four children, children, Ella Ray Wahlberg, Grace Margaret Wahlberg, Brandon Wahlberg, Michael Wahlberg, Parents, Alma McPeck, Donald E. Wahlberg Senior Relatives, Donnie Wahlberg, Sibling, Scott Wahlberg, Half-Sibling, Buddy Wahlberg, Half-Sibling, Donna Wahlberg, Half-Sibling, Robert Wahlberg, Sibling, Arthur Wahlberg, Sibling, Paul Wahlberg, Sibling, James Wahlberg, Sibling, Debbie Wahlberg, Sibling, Michelle Wahlberg, Sibling, Tracy Wahlberg, sibling, Jeff Wahlberg, niece or nephew, James M. Wahlberg, sibling, trademarks, Boston accent, often plays tough, no-nonsense characters, with sarcastic sense of humor, frequently plays law enforcement officials, military personnel or criminals in his films, often plays fathers, dad is home, the lovely bones, instant family, frequently cast by directors Sean Anders, Michael Bay, Peter Berg and David O. Russell. Trivia. He and some friends were actually booked to fly on one of the planes that crashed into the Twin Towers on September the 11th, 2001. Originally planning on flying from Boston to Los Angeles, but at the last minute they decided to charter a plane to Toronto, Canada for a film festival, and then from there to Los Angeles. A near brush with death that he still dreams about today. We certainly would have tried to do something to fight. I've had probably over 50 dreams about it. Was a drug dealer as a young teenager? His older sister Debbie passed away on September 2, 2003, leaving behind a teenage son. She died on the same day that Mark's first child, Ella Ray Wahlberg, was born. Martin Scorsese directed Wahlberg to his very first Academy Award nomination as SGT. Sean Dignam in The Departed, 2006. Wahlberg has said that it's one of the roles he is most proud of. Dropped out of school when he was age 13. Quotes. I've always looked at my career as an athlete would look at his. I won't play forever. Some don't know when to walk away, but the smart ones do. On his delight for starring in Walt Disney's Invincible, 2006, it's a movie my kids can see, my nieces and nephews. I haven't had that. None of my nieces and nephews have seen Boogie Nights, 1997, thank God. I haven't made too many PG movies. His reaction to his Oscar nomination for The Departed, 2006, Anytime someone says you have an opportunity to work with Martin Scorsese you jump at the chance. Marty and I were constantly in this struggle. I had problems with Marty. He was, I'm Martin Scorsese da dee da. He was pushing me in different ways. But it wasn't just Marty. The whole time I was in the character so I was mad at everybody. It was Leo, Matt and Jack. Fuck Jack too. We were able to laugh about it afterwards. And we have a great relationship now. And we're going to do other stuff in the future. In my movies. I'm not trying to erase any old image of myself, really. 
and also I'm not trying to imitate anyone or follow in their footsteps, because I know, Burt Reynolds was just one of the people that told me this. I know how you can only last in this business if you've got something special to offer, just by being yourself. Imitators don't last, and I'd like to last, on Boogie Nights. 1997, it was a showstopper, and it had a good screenplay, a real story. It also helped Burt Reynolds' career, and now I can more sympathize with that. Now that I've been in the business a fairly long time, so I can see how doing a comeback that's popular and also critically liked is something rare and real special. On David Beckham, jokingly, I'm not telling Beckham to take his family home. I'm just not sure why he came to America in the first place. Man, we don't want your soccer. There's no way Americans are going to buy the idea of 90 minutes of running around without much happening. Thanks for trying guys, but we'll stick to baseball and basketball on George Michael being sent to prison for driving under the influence of drugs. I was 16, when I went to prison but he's been busted a couple of times. He should get a driver or go to Amsterdam where pot is legal, but my heart goes out anyone, who goes to prison. I pray for him. I like to talk to people. I've got one assistant, one Blackberry. That's my overhead. I don't text that much or email. I like to sit down face to face and have a conversation with you. I'm old fashioned. On narrowly avoiding being on hijack 9-11's flight United 93, if I was on that plane with my kids, it wouldn't have went down like it did. There would have been a lot of blood, in that first class cabin, and then me saying, okay, we're going to land somewhere safely, don't worry, we certainly would have tried to do something to fight. I've had probably over 50 dreams about it. I did a lot of things, that I regretted and I certainly paid for my mistakes. You have to go and ask for forgiveness and it wasn't until I really started doing good and doing right, by other people as well as myself that I really started to feel that guilt go away, so I don't have a problem going to sleep at night. As far as I'm concerned, there's no job more important on the planet than being a mom. I don't want to let my guard down and feel too comfortable. If you become complacent, you start feeling entitled. I'm ready to go dig ditches if I have to. Whatever I gotta do to provide for my family, whatever I gotta do to make sure that I do the best possible job, at whatever wonderful opportunities I've been handed. For actors who sit there and talk about, oh, I went to SEAL training. I don't give a fuck what you did. You don't know what these guys did. For somebody go sit there and say my job was as difficult as being in the military. How fucking dare you. While you sit in a makeup chair for two hours. I pray to be a good servant to God, a father, a husband, a son, a friend, a brother, an uncle, a good neighbor, a good leader to those who look up to me, a good follower to those who are serving God and doing the right thing. Actually, you English people always get to play Americans but they never let us play Englishmen. So if some great 18th century English royal role came up, I could go over there for two years. I could become that character. And I tell you what, I'd kill it, about his criminal past as a teenager. No, I don't have any problem sleeping at night. Salaries. Spencer Confidential. 2020, $30 million. All the money in the world. 2017, $5 million. All the money in the world. 2017, $1.5 million, for reshoots, two guns, 2013, $10 million, entourage, 2004, $3 million, year, 2007, as executive producer, The Truth About Charlie, 2002, $10 million, Planet of the Apes, 2001, $8 million. <laughs>